Yeah, uh, so first talk, I'm glad to be here. So um, yeah, uh, it's my first time here. Uh, I have mentioned this and I'm very glad that I can help this talk. Um, yeah, I have uh, held this talk already once in my life, but in a very short condensed form. So this is actually the first time I'm doing extended edition. And uh, yeah, don't be scared about the title because this is clickbait. Yeah? <laughs> so, uh, I was tempted to add a little um, subtitle there so that you can see what it's actually about. So uh, it's not about, not only about personal opinion, there's a lot of personal opinion in there, so I hope there will be discussion later on, but there's also some, some code which I base my th things on or my thinkings on. So it's a, actually a thing for you to think about what you do in your daily life and uh, what maybe can be improved. Okay. So, as promised, uh, I'll do a little introduction about myself. Um, so, yeah, I'm now coding for like, like uh, depends on when you start counting, like 15 years or 10 years. And I uh, actually started as a, a computer graphics programmer, so that's why there are things like HLSL in there. And I did a lot of C++, but also Java, Python, C Sharp, and all this stuff. And I'm currently doing a lot of Go. You might see that there is no Rust on there, just simply because I don't have a project yet, but I want to have one. Um, and there's another thing you might notice there. Um, most of the languages are actually garbage collected. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, but uh, as you can also see, the C++ is the biggest one, so that's basically where I base all my stuff on. Um, yeah, and in case what you want, if, you are, what you want to, if you're wondering what I'm doing, uh, I'm currently a site reliability engineer at Trivago, which means I have to deal with all these, except for the graphic stuff, okay? Okay, enough of the start. Have fun. So. Okay, I want to play a little game with you, and I know that you all have written C++, so you can totally read this. Um, I guess everybody can read this. I mean, this is very, very simple. Uh, so we have a little class here, and uh, we don't talk about sense here, it's just a little example. Uh, so we have a member, and we create a new member of type event filter, and then we put it to some singleton uh, registered along with our this pointer. And um, we found out that this causes a leak. So what what do we do? We are a C++ programmer. So first thing, we look at the first member. We see, yeah, it's a member, so I own this. So this is mine. So this is part of my class, so I own this, and I created this even in the constructor, so I take care of this. So this is mine, normally it is. So, uh, but you see that this is passed actually to the register function, and you're just wondering, oh, is this maybe cleaned up there? Mm, hopefully not, because I own it. So you think about, okay, is this really correct that I pass this to that? Maybe it does, maybe not. So I probably look at the register function and see, okay, there is no delete in there. Uh, so what is basically the question? Where is my delete? And if I know there is no destructor which deletes my object. So I own it, I need a destructor that deletes it. So that's the rule, so that's not there. But this is actually not everything. There's a tiny little thing more. And the question is, who is only me? So what you start is, you, you think about rules, you think about a lot of little things actually. Yeah? You mainly think about ownership at first, so you think who owns it, who has to destroy it and so on. So um, you want to be clear about who owns what. And this is not only when you write code, but if you, or also if you write code for others, then you want to be expressive and say, okay, if I take this, uh, I don't do anything with that. Yeah? And uh, besides that, there is, of course, a few other rules, like for every malloc there must be a free, and with C++ there's also new and delete, same rule, and you don't cross these, don't. It's like Ghostbusters, no, don't do that, so it will break. Yeah? And uh, if you're a little longer in the game, then you also know this little acronym, Ray. So who knows Ray? Oh, more than I expected. Okay, so for all the others, I will explain it later. But you know, the problem with C++ and all these rules that you might gather over the years of programming is they're not really rules, they're guidelines. Yeah? So they're there to break. So people don't follow the rules, so yeah, it's basically a mess. Um, so you try to make people follow the rules as best as you can. So you come up with a concept that is normally called contracts. And what is a contract? Well, simple thing. Um, you have different kind of function calls, for example. So you decide based on your function call type what is allowed or what you just want to display to your, um, to your using programmer, um, what is actually allowed and what you do with it. The first thing is 
pretty clear. It's a copy saying, okay, you keep your stuff, I keep mine. So I do what, whatever I want. The second one is um, yeah, saying basically optional, but this is like old style. This is a little bit more yellow because uh, basically I could do everything that I want, but I promise I won't do that. Fingers crossed. Uh, the next one is actually cool. This is C++, so you say, okay, I borrow it and I can change it, but I won't delete it. So you're the owner still, but I maybe want to play around with it and change things. I can say, okay, I want to just read it. So you put cons in front. Then you have some arcane stuff. This is the move operator. This is a little arcane. So uh, I don't explain it here because it's a, uh, I had to read like three times through the standard to, uh, to understand what it actually does. But uh, yeah. Uh, the other one is a little bit more understandable. It basically says there can be only one. So if I pass something, I take it away from you, and then I put it into there, and then he has it. So this is saying, okay, I'll take away your ownership, and now I have it. So that's how I express this. And the last one is like, hey, let's share things. Yeah, you can have one, I can have one, the last one cleans up. Pretty one. So, pretty neat. I mean, everything is expressed here, yes, isn't it? Cool, yeah? Yeah, but well, it's not that easy, of course, because these are guidelines. And the first thing, is this really a deep copy? So the implementant of my class has to make sure that everything is copied. If you forget something, you're fucked. Yeah? Then you suddenly have ownership of something you didn't know that you have ownership upon. Yeah? Second thing is like, this is uh, the reference is done to say, okay, I won't delete your stuff. Oh yes, of course I can delete your stuff because I can get the address of your reference and then can delete it if I'm really a bad guy. So nobody prevents me from doing that. So mm. last thing is, it is const, but in C++ you can take away the const because you want it. You normally don't do, but you can. Hmm. And uh, last but not least, of course, if it's a share pointer, you can still access the data in this point and delete it if you want to, but this is like hammering, okay. Yeah. Okay, so basically you can define contracts, but nobody checks this. You have to know what this means, yeah? And you have to learn, and normally you learn it the hard way. So you fail a few times, fail over, and at some point after a few years you know, okay, I do this so people understand what I'm doing and all this stuff, but uh, you get along with it. And later you will stumble upon something that normally is passed on from senior programmer to senior programmer, and this is static code analysis. So when I started, nobody used this. Now everybody uses this, and this is good because static code analysis can help you. Yeah? It can help you to define, to see your errors, to follow the rules, to, and, um, to um, enforce the rules. Yeah? So and this is basically what you do nowadays. You have a set of rules, you learn them on the hard way, and you use static code analysis to fix this. This is C++ still, yeah? So I'm going from that. So, a mess, yeah? And um, some years ago, so in 1996, yeah, when I was still young, <coughs> yeah? <laughs> there was a new program language created, and this was basically perceived as the dawn of garbage collection. And they said, uh, don't worry, we got you covered. Everything that is allocated will be deallocated. So you won't have any memory leaks anymore. Everything is fine. Okay, good, cool, sounds great, nice marketing. We'll have a look at that. So let's take Java 1996, first version. So same code as before, looks almost the same. Yeah, and uh, yeah, F, new. We've got a garbage collector, so no destructor needed. Everything's covered, isn't it? Send out, no, there is a leak in here. Why is there a leak in here? Because we just transferred ownership. What does this mean? So we have created an object that is held by someone, and then we pass it on to a global instance that now holds it too. And we never remove it from the global instance. Now imagine you have a program with a tree view on the side. It's not that I worked on a company that had this. Um, and uh, every time you open up a tree, things get registered in a global event registry. And when you close it, it doesn't get unregistered. And now your, uh, your, CTO, uh, your CTO comes to the point where he says, okay, we need a test with 50,000 objects. And you open it, you close it, you open it, and then your application stands still for two minutes. Why? Oh, you have got a lot of things going on, yeah? And your memory is going like this. 
is saying, hey, didn't you promise me that I won't have memory leaks? But my size is growing and growing and growing, so this is definitely a leak, so what is happening? And this is something that I call lingering objects. So that are objects that are just laying around, that are held by some instance, but they're actually not in use anymore. So because you forget to unregister them, or remove them, or whatever. And this is also a leak. And this, surprise, is not catched by your garbage collector, who just promised you to clean up after you. Oh, that's not good. So, and what actually happened? So because the garbage collector told you, you don't have to worry, you did not worry. And you did not have a destructor because the garbage collector just took it away from you because you don't need it. You don't need a destructor. So you didn't care. You just did it. Hmm, bad thing. So that is something that rarely happens to you when you use C++ because you have to think about this all the time because the consequences are so much worse. And suddenly all the mess that you have in C++ becomes somewhat a little bit better because you as a programmer think more, more about ownership, about resources, about resourcing and all this stuff. So you keep your stuff clean. In Java, you don't normally because you don't care many, many, many times. And even worse, things that you used to clean up were taken away from you. Okay, so let's have an overview about what leaks we can actually have. So because lingering is not the only one, because lingering, uh, because there's another one which is resource leaks. So you open up a network connection to the database and you have to close it at some point, same thing. So who takes care of all these leaks? So this first one, clear, garbage collector, get you covered. The second one, well, something. You have to do it yourself. Try, find some way, you will do it, you can do it, yeah? But at that point, and that's not my personal opinion, that's where I say, the marketing lied. So you promised me to, but you didn't keep it up. And you even made it worse for me, because I don't have tools for that. So, but yeah, does C++ do any better than that? I mean, it's old. Yeah? So how does C++ work on that? So how does C++ fix all this thing? And there's one answer, Ray. Everything, can be, everything here can be covered by Ray. And why is this the way? Because C++ understood one thing very, very well, and that is memory is just one resource. Database connections are a resource. If you have an event handler, this can be a resource too. Everything that has an open closed semantic is a fucking resource. And if you have, uh, and if you see what uh, resource acquisition is initialization, which is the acronym actually does, then it comes even clearer. Because it states just a few simple things. The constructor acquires, open, new, whatever, start it. The destructor releases this, always the same, yeah? A constructor, acquire, destructor, release. And the destructor is guaranteed to be called at certain point in times. And this is a guarantee that is pretty, pretty important because stack mechanics help you here. So if you put something on the stack and your variable goes out of stack, the destructor is guaranteed to be called. And that is how C++ or modern C++ uses all this, um, this automatic cleanup mechanics. So this is what uh, actually I saw this first in 2002 or something like that, and uh, when C++11 was released, this was a new thing, but okay, people did it for quite a long time. Um, so what does it mean in detail? So this all relies on an automatic call at a very common function of a very common function, like the destructor, at a defined time, like the end of scope. It can be something else, like end of function or something, but a defined time and a function that is well known, like the destructor, yeah? And um, it's also necessary that this destructor call is guaranteed for chaining. So if you have an object that has a nested object and a nested object, all these destructors will be called in chain. This is guaranteed. You can rely on that at a specific point in time. You know this will happen now at this point. And this is pretty much cool. So let's have a look back at the code. So how do we fix our code? It looks a little messy, but it's C++, come on. Yeah? <laughs> So, okay, so first of all, we create something called a shared pointer. So we share a resource. Uh, we don't use new anymore. This is C11. So we say make shared, which internally calls new, but come on. <laughs> uh, then we register it and we deregister it in the, uh, in the destructor, which is basically the open closed semantics. Yeah? 
So every time my foo object is destroyed, I automatically unregister. So if I put it in a vector, or in an array sort of, and put it uh, and delete the vector, it will go through the whole vector and remove your foo, call the destructor, remove it, you're done. So clean up chaining, works. But it's hard hmm? not calling delete in the destructor, it's the same as the original example. Yeah. Yeah, so we basically the only fix that we did is the unregister. Notice that we didn't call the elite here because our shared pointer is taking care of that. That's the stack mechanics. But the whole problem of forgetting to unregister a resource that's tied to a global is still there. No, it's not because it's the destructor. And the destructor is guaranteed to be called. Right, but not because of right. But because, yeah. because you provided a destructor yeah. to unregister. Exactly. No. Yeah. So two fixes actually. Okay. And uh, the cool thing about this is this is exception safe. So if I create something, an object of foo, and an exception is thrown, and it's on the stack, important, uh, then it will be cleaned up because exception is end of scope too. Yeah? No new and delete is required. Well, it's hidden, but you don't need to use new and delete in modern C++. You have no resource leaks anymore, and this is basically a resource leak. Yeah? And um, you have a defined ownership. Like if you use this uh, new pointer stuff that was taken over from Boost, uh, if you care about that, <laughs> um, you have defined ownership in, ter in terms of saying, okay, this is the shared thing and the last one cleans up. This is basically shared pointer. Yeah? But you still have to stick to the rules. So if you still have to call new, you have to make sure that the destructor is called. If you don't do, then you still don't stick to the rules. So actually, it's cool. It's not pretty, but it's cool, yeah? Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, you can do better probably, but it's at least for many resource management, this is a very cool thing to do, and it's very consistent. Uh, you just keep thinking about the stuff, and you have a consistent way of solving things, and this is what is pretty much important, I think. So, yeah. But if you now remember back, I called ray is something that just requires uh, some function at some point in time that is defined. So maybe we can use ray with jobs, garbage collection, maybe, it's still possible. So um, let's have a look at the leaks again. And uh, yeah, we don't care about memory leak anymore because this is a garbage collector, done. But we care about those two because these are things that we have to, uh, have to manage manually in GC languages. So. Um, First thing is something called the finalizer. So it turns out there is a destructor. We could use it, but you pretty much don't want this because this thing is totally unreliable. Because the finalizer is called when the garbage collector finally tries to, to clean it up, and then it might call the finalizer, which is done by some threat in some distant future if you're of really bad luck. So you have no defined point in time. So the finalizer is a bad decision for that. Like, think of it, yeah? you have a database connection and you want to have to close it now because you need to free up resources because you have a lot of things going to the database. And the garbage collector says, well, not now, maybe in five minutes. Not good. Then you have something called defer, which is actually quite nice. You have this thing in Go and uh, this originated in D and this is basically saying, um, defer this function call here to the end of the function. So basically you have something like, file open and then defer file close and they make sure at the end of the function close is called. And this is also exception free and such. So this is okay, I can live with that. I mean you have to know the defer and you have still to think about that you have to need to close things but at least you know the close function already which is a defined function and you have a defined point in time so it's okay again. Sadly you don't have this in C sharp or Java which are now the big players to be, you know, to be fair. And in C Sharp and Java, you have two things, which is the disposable and the closable interface. And these two languages are very closely related, so they work in a very close fashion. So what do we have to do? Well, first of all, you have to implement the closable thing, yeah, or disposable. And what do we have to do? You have to create a destructor called close. Well. The same function again that you have just taken away because of garbage collecting, you enter again by adding an interface and then you have it here. Nice one. So, yeah. But that is sadly not all. Because who calls close? And um, this is done normally by a try finally block. Yeah? So you try something and if the exception is thrown, then you close it. So basically you want to 
wrap away this exception safeness. So you make sure that close is always called in here. Now this is a lot of code. And you even have to define foo at the top because otherwise you don't have it there. Oh, f on the top because otherwise you don't have it at the bottom. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, pretty, pretty unpretty, in my opinion. But later on, like uh, 15 years later, they finally came up with a solution that is a little more elegant and that looks like this because new syntax is always fun. Let's try at brackets and then everything is fine. At the end, this assumes that you know that your class, if it has closable implemented, then close will be caused if you use it like this. If, 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 and you know, and yeah, again, we have rules. Yeah. So this is actually what you currently have. So, so what I want to tell you about is the problem, first off, is if you forget to think about ownership, which you definitely do all the time in C++, you make things problematic. You will forget things. You will forget to close things. You will forget to unregister because you're not used to. Especially junior programmers will do that. I mean, we don't talk about what junior programmers do to C++ code, but yeah. So this happens. They don't learn to think about that. I recently, just two days ago, I had this problem because not as a, a normal programmer, not a senior, but a normal programmer, I don't know how to call this, uh, made an extension to the software road and he made this mistake. He said, okay, we have a garbage collector. I don't care about allocation. Let's use this and put 80,000 messages per second through this. And like 80,000 times per second, there were like, I guess it was 50 allocations made or more. This is bad. Because he didn't think about it. He came from PHP, so you don't care about that. You, don't, you just do it in PHP. Okay. So, and the next thing, and this is the bad thing about C++, if you have no enforced rules, you will miss things. And uh, I, like a few days ago, I had a very nice tweet coming up, and this pretty much summed it up. I like this very much. Yeah, it's like, if you blame the garbage collector, you're blaming the wrong guy, because basically, the garbage collector is cleaning after you, and if you do bad things, then yeah, garbage collector can't help. So it's not the garbage collector that's bad, it's the thinking that is not working. But the garbage collector led to this thinking, in my opinion. So, what to do? So, static code analysis, cool thing, yeah? But some things can only be seen at runtime. So you need to extend the language. So you need to put things like ownership and all this lifetime stuff into a language. And whoops, what do we have? Rust. And that's the point why I'm interested in Rust. Because, because Rust just thinks this totally to the end. And this is a very cool thing, and that is what is so fascinating about Rust, because this is actually the first language in years that doesn't say garbage collector solves all the things, they say manually, manual resource management still has its place. And we're gonna make this, sorry, great again. Yeah? <laughs> so Rust is actually interesting because of exactly that. But there's one thing, and I need to talk about that, <laughs> because yeah, I'm coming from an embedded systems graphics part. So there is a point where I'm out of resources and I need memory. So what do I do in manual memory, memory management? I call delete, which basically says, this is now free, full stop. So basically, if I have like a 32-bit system and I want like one gigabit of free space, I delete one gigabyte and I have it at an instant. I don't have to use swap, I don't run out of Enterprise, and what else? For the garbage collection, however, if you say, okay, I need something, you tend to just null things, you say equals null, and then you say, okay, garbage collector, gc.collect. I say, I really need this now. Garbage collector, please, please, please do this. And the garbage collector will say, no, not yet. No, 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 don't want this, no, 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 later. Because gc.collect is more like a guideline, you know, you say, if you've got time, dear garbage collector, please, 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 later, somewhere, please, could you free up? I mean, I need it now, but maybe, yeah? And if you've got a real-time application that tries to render a few million points in 30 frames per second, this is really fucking annoying. <laughs> okay, so to sum it up, why I hate GCs? Oops, one, two, four. <laughs> 
Ah, okay. So, I think developers get a false sense of safety. Yeah, because they start to think GC will, start, will help me all the time, all the way, and uh, will save me of all kinds of leaks there. It is not. It gets more complicated because all the leaks that are left are the complicated ones that you can only see or solve during runtime. And they took away our tools. So the problem is not, not solved, it's actually delayed and made worse. So that's my opinion. Yeah? And uh, on the very, very end, and this is what people might think that I talk about that a lot, is there is overhead. So you need to keep track of your references and all this stuff. Yeah? So you have like additional allocations that have to be done besides your allocations that you can actually do the garbage collection. And you have to stop the world stuff and all this thing sums up to you don't want this in an embedded system. Yeah? But this is at the very end. So why didn't I talk about that? Because you have the choice. If you do a Mopium project, you can think about, do I really care about memory management? Am I on, on an embedded system, for example, or the graphics card or whatever? Then you choose something that does not have a garbage collector because you care and you want to care. So but if you write some UI applications that is not that big, then yeah, go for a garbage collector. And then please take care of your connections or your file handles. But that's it. So garbage collection is not bad at all. It helps you developing. But you have to decide. And now hopefully I think that you have a good picture on when to decide what to take. Thank you very much. So if there are any questions, I just want to say, uh, I have a little daughter that's two years old. Uh, I'm used to very stupid questions, so there can be no stupid questions. <laughs> um, I actually have two, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be like using the microphone and everybody else you should too, if they have a question. That would be nice for the recording. Um, so first one, you said destructors are guaranteed to be run. Yeah. Um, and I know one of the big bad epiphanies Rust sort of had close to 1.0 was, oh fuck, destructors are not guaranteed to be run. Yeah. <laughs> because you can basically get the reference cycle if you do reference counting and then mm. reference yourself. Mm. Um, is destructors running actually any sort of guaranteed in C++ or don't you have the same problem with shared pointer? Yeah. So uh, the circular reference thing is um, actually one of the points where you have a problem when you start reference counting. Because if you have only reference counting, then you have this kind of loop. So both reference each other and you cannot get rid of each other because you're referencing each other. So they have this little universe and they keep spinning and spinning. So this is not solved by destructors. So this is actually a very bad thing to solve or a very hard thing to solve. And if you look back in the Java version history, I think it was still Java 1.0, they had this problem with the garbage collector because they did resource, um, yeah, resource, um, reference counting. You can solve this, but it's not easy. So how do, how do garbage collectors solve this? They only look at the top level instances, so those that don't have a parent, and then they destroy those. So if the top, so on the top level, you don't have this kind of loops, so you can assure that all the uh, objects below are actually cleaned up. But this is a problem of reference counting itself, it's not a problem that is actually bound to destructive things, so this is just one hard problem. So how do you solve it in C++? Weak references. Yeah, so this is the way you do it. I don't like this that much, but normally I take care of that my reference um, pointers do not reference each other. So if you can do that. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's, that's half the answer, though, right? Because yeah. that means destructors are, in fact, not guaranteed to be run. But you have to be careful about RC. Yeah. Um, second question is, I feel like, and that's not my area of expertise either, but you seem to have a very, like, Java understanding of GCs. Like, I've, from what I hear, there's a lot of research into GCs, there's a lot of research into real-time GCs, yeah. non-stop the world GCs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, any comment on if that improves the situation at all? So, so uh, one thing, why, I, why do I mention Java? Because I started with Java and I began to hate it because at the time I used it, it was so fucking slow. <laughs> so that's why I used to pick on Java all the time. Um, so actually, you saw that I'm using Go a lot. So Go has one of the currently, I think, best implementation of a garbage collection currently available for free. Yeah? And uh, this is totally concurrent and this is really running very, very nice. So uh, 
So Go is actually the first language where I want to accept the garbage collector as is because I, I don't have to write all this allocation stuff myself. So in C++ I have to write all these things myself like I need to have to write a, um, a bucket allocator or a body allocator or whatever to keep track of my memory and all this stuff. I don't want to do this all the time. But I don't want to have the GC over it also. So Go is a nice thing in the middle, so because of the concurrent garbage collection. And uh, in Java you actually have this too, but you have to pay money for that as far as I know. So there is this, uh, this concurrent garbage collector that you can buy from some company. I guess this is uh, like most of the, uh, the um, stock exchange things are using this because they need to be real time. Yeah, so there are possibilities. Um, yeah, you still have an overhead and you still feel it in certain situations, but it gets lower and lower and lower. So that's also why I say the runtime part is not that important because it gets better and it can be changed, it can be mitigated and all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, does it answer your question actually? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good. Anything <laughs> else? Any more questions? Good, okay. Then thank you again.